Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our L39 Albatross ZA version and we're looking at taxi, takeoff and landing. So first of all taxi, we've got a, a completely started aircraft here. We do it by method of differential braking. So if we look at our control that we can see at the bottom left, our control display, I'm applying the wheel brakes now through the both wheel brakes button. In fact, let's just go and have a check which one that is. That one there, wheel brake on. So that applies both left and right wheel brakes. Now if I introduce the rudder for the left, you can see it differentially brakes so that only the one brake, you know, only one side is braking. And if I turn the rudder right, then we've got that there. And we, that's also represented by this gauge down here, which shows the uh, hydraulic pressure of the left and right wheel brakes. So you can see rudder left and brake, rudder right and brake, and that's how it works. So the next thing we want to do is check the wheel brake. The wheel brake is a little bit confusing in this thing at first glance. So it's this uh, lever here. It's on at the moment, fully on. We can tell that because it's pushed fully forward and it's deflecting this piece of metal here. If I want to take the wheel brake off, I will move it just so that it's no longer touching this metal bracket here, but no further up than it needs to be. And emergency wheel brake is to yank it back like thus. So I'm going to put it in its off position there. Also, don't forget to remove your wheel trucks in case you put them on during the cold start. And we're going to get going, so that's thrust forward. And we need to keep a fair amount of thrust for turning corners. But we've got to keep the speed down. It hates turning tightly with uh, more than kind of um, 10 kilometers an hour. So full right rudder and wheel brake on. And you can see differential braking turns us like this. Release the wheel brake, a bit more thrust. A bit of left wheel brake, right. When I say left and right wheel brake, I just mean turning the rudder in a direction and pressing the wheel brake on. Right rudder, wheel brake. Simple as that. Once you've done it, uh, gone around a couple of corners, it's, it's perfectly useful, uh, perfectly intuitive. Do you want to quickly go over the speed limits, uh, Stahl, as per the manual? Yeah, so according to the manual, you generally don't want to taxi any faster than 30 kph in the straight line. About 15 if you have an external load on, and no faster than 10 kph when you're going around corners since she does not corner particularly well while going too fast and she does take a while to slow down as well. If, um, well I shall report back at the runway. We're on the runway now so we're going to quickly go through the procedure for taking off. Now the first thing I want to do is check as much as I can that my nose wheel, my nose wheel which is a caster wheel is straight. So brake on, throttle up and just release the brake and just make sure that we're going forwards and we can adjust as necessary with the rudder. Okay, I'm pretty happy that's forward. Because what you can have is the wheel cocked to the side like I have there, and then you put full power on, and immediately the um, the airplane's gonna jerk to the right, left or the right, with the caster wheel. So that's just a good bit of practice. What I'm gonna do is I am going to hold wheel brake on. I'm gonna spool up to full throttle. Once we're at 100% or the maximum RPM, we're gonna let go of the wheel brake. I'm going to then use rudder, if possible, just use rudder control to keep us straight. If we need to, if she's cocking to the side or in high wind or whatever, we may need to use some wheel, differential wheel brake as well to keep her. At 80 knots, we are going to ro rotate and we're going to rotate approximately 10 degrees. And to judge that, we're going to get the bottom of the gun sight here level with the horizon here. Once we're at that angle, we're not going to pull up any, any um, higher. Once we've rotated at that 10 degrees, we're going to leave it at that 10 degrees and she'll take off essentially when she's ready to take off. When she takes off will be depending on your weight. If we're loaded down with bombs, it's going to be, well, I don't really know, but well above 100. If we're quite light like we are now, probably about 100 knots. But the key is just leave it at the rotation angle and wait till she takes off. We're going to make sure that we are on intermediate flaps or landing flaps, which is this one here. Let's take off flaps, not landing flaps. Roger, take off flaps. When do I want to put my gear up, Stahl? At about 120 knots uh, and flaps will be about 135. Roger that. Anything else you can think of before I go? Yeah, do be careful. She can sag through a little bit when you retract the flaps. Roger, okay. Spooling. Break off. So immediately she's jerking to the right, but I can use just rudder correction for this. Sorry, I meant left. I can use just rudder correction of this, it wasn't violent enough for me I had to go. Right, I need to concentrate now, waiting for 80 knots. Rotate. And wait. I went a bit above angle there, but not too bad. The reason we don't want to go back above angle, ang sorry, too much happening, gear up. Above angle is we risk a tail strike. Wait for 165, uh, was that style for the flaps? 135, uh, 165 one, one, is automatic flap protection oh, speed. My mistake, I did it a bit late there. Okay. 
everything is up and good to go. I'm going to turn that off. Yep, just check the flaps are good. Um, regards actual flight, is there anything you want to um, say, like maximum speeds or anything that we can do wrong? Well, I mean, maximum speeds, as mentioned, she'll extend air brakes anyway as soon as you fly too fast. Um, she does fly really nicely and smoothly, actually. Okay. One thing that can be a bit problematic if you pull too hard on the stick, she will start stalling on you. Um, the stall is not super soft, but it's not too terrible either. And if you just release the stick, push the nose down a little bit, you should be perfectly fine. Yeah, I just had a little play. She's pretty foolproof to be honest. It's going to be a hard plane to crash. Okay, right, so do you want to start talking through the landing procedure? I'll get in a circuit, a rough circuit, and uh, I'll go. I'll start going in for, for that. Yeah, sure, so for the circuit you don't want to fly any faster than about 190 knots, probably even a bit slower than that. Uh, she doesn't particularly like to slow down as long as um, you don't use air brake. Uh, obviously the the flaps and the gear do help. Uh, one thing that is quite noticeable is the pitch differences when you extend the gear and uh, the flap. So that's something you'll have to be on top of to compensate. Um, so what you want to do is, when you're on your downwind and you roughly passing uh, the threshold of the runway, yep. you extend the gear. Doing that, I'm turning into the down late downwind now, standby. And what speed should I be? About 190, you said, or less less than yes, 190? Yes, or, or a bit less. Okay, that's fine. Grim Reapers, we usually do our circuits at 300, but that's we have reasons for that. We fly fast jets a lot, but we're obviously going to do slower in this. Right, so at 190 or less now, gear's coming down, passing the threshold on downwind, gear down. At what point um, do I get the flaps dirty in the base turn? Uh, yeah, just before you turn base, usually, uh, if you can get it at 150 or, or roughly when you're at the base like turn. Hey, firm. You want to be doing 150 knots uh, when you do it when you put them to medium. Well, that is 25 degrees flaps. Running off a tiny bit more speed. K150, intermediate flaps down. Pong, waiting for indicator. And yep, we're at intermediate, turning base now. Speed at this point, just between a, uh, kind of 120 and 150, I guess. Yeah, I would say 130 to 150, roughly. Okay. Once well, you go below 140, you can extend landing flaps if you want as well, but that obviously means you'll need a lot more thrust than to keep her going. Yep, I'm going to do that now, just to get everything done while like in the base turn. So, flaps to landing, a bit more thrust to compensate. And now she'll definitely want to pitch up, by the way. Yep, so now I'm adjusting my trim a lot, as you can probably see from the control display in the bottom left. Heading in for our final now. Uh, what kind of speed do I want to get on the final approach? About 100 to 120 knots. Um, I would say at threshold about 100 to 210. Don't let it drop too far below 100. Okay. Everything's on cue. A little bit of wind, nothing major. Radar altitude warning, no problem. Legend says Hawks had to go so quickly in the other nine once the earth is still spinning. Interesting. Crossing threshold, exactly one zero zero knots. And just cut throttle and gently let it glide in. We'll probably touch down at about 80 to 90 knots, roughly. Flaring, yeah, perfect. 80, uh, 80 to 90 knots, exactly as we said. Right. Uh, I noticed the brakes are pretty crap. As long as you're landing slow. As long as negative uh, L39. As long as you're landing slow, I don't think the brakes will ever be a problem. I only use about a quarter of the runway up. Good. Okay, everything there was just really easy. That's my first time doing it, and. Um, it was just really easy and logical, to be honest. Anything you want to add to take off, flight, landing, and taxi style? Oh, negative. She's quite a beauty, quite a beauty to fly, and you know, rather easy. So it should be straightforward. Roger. Hope that helps, and see you later.